Jeff from Two Hex Garage. Well, if you notice here, we got Todd's 388 cubic inch small block sitting here with the hoist, gonna take it off of here. First thing you're gonna see is us getting this off and the goal is to get it on the engine run stand. But with this video, we got a whole lot of little things to do, but in this video, I do wanna show you how to install the flywheel on this and why that's important. We got a lot going on today. Um, a lot of little knickknacks per se on this engine, but this video, it's gonna be kind of, you know, just a little fun thing to watch and time-lapse of us getting it on the run stand. But before we do that, we are gonna show you how to install a flex plate flywheel on this. Um, reason why it's important is it, you know what, that is what's gonna hold your engine to the torque converter, make it start and transfer all of that power back to the rear wheels. So you gotta do it right. And we are actually using an Eagle one that came with the rotating assembly. It's already been balanced with it. And of course, we're gonna use ARP hardware with that. Um, there is a torque spedding off, spe spec on it. Sorry, can't talk this morning. And we'll go over all that, but I just wanted to get a quick video of kind of explaining what we're gonna do today. And there'll be some more videos of all the little small things you're gonna do before you get one of these started. So with that guys, we're gonna safely remove this, put the flex plate on, flywheel, whatever you wanna call it. It's been a long day and get it on the run stand. With that, we'll see you in a few. All right, so what Jimmy just showed you there was actually putting the back cam plug in and the freeze plugs. If you notice, he made sure to make that flush and we put some of the aviation sealant in these plugs to help seal it up and then a little bit of black silicone on the back of that. That just helps it from not leaking. So the next step on this is putting the flex plate on. And these only go on one way. No, they don't. I've seen them on both ways, but this is the correct way. Yeah, well, I'm saying like bolt pattern wise. These pads are raised. Yes. They go this way yeah, towards the, the outside. Yeah, and that's where your torque converter is going to connect to. But as far as bolt pattern wise, if you see this, it's got a lug. These only go on one way. That's the timing for it. So you just find your spot, make sure your holes line up. Now, this did say to use a red Loctite. Uh, mind you, this was balanced with the kit. Um, it's kind of an important piece when you're doing all of this, but um, it calls for a little bit of red Loctite. And I'm kind of doing this in a hurry because I don't like these things dangling. Um, so I put a little bit of red Loctite on there, the 242. And it also called for a little bit of fastener lube underneath the head of that, which I, that one I got a little bit on. It does come with a torque spec on this, and it was 85 foot-pounds in a crisscross pattern. So the sequence is just one at a time, and we'll show you how to kind of trick that. So what I'm going to do is, on the next bolt, get things going. And, like, mind you, all I'm doing here is, if you look, I just put a little bit of the ARP fastener lubricant. Reason that's important is when you torque this down, you got that extra lubrication between the flex plate and the bolt. And then from there, um, you just take your red Loctite. Should I show that another one? Just put a little bit on there and run your bolts in. And these are a 12 point kit from ARP. Uh, like I said, and I'm not running these in all the way. The reason being on that is it has a little bit of movement back and forth, and I want to just make sure to get everything lined up properly before we torque it down. And here we go. And... Jimmy's out right now. He's over there getting some parts going. A little funny story. We're going to be building a small block Chevy 
for a 19, is it Brian, 1970? 1970 one-ton Chevy pickup truck. And what's kind of cool about it is, Brian watches my videos and got a hold of us to do that. Actually grew up in the house that I actually live in. So it's a small world. Um, neat, cool little thing too is got talking to him. And he actually uh, used to work on the Bigfoot team, monster truck. This is not Brian. It has to be Larry's. Oh, that's the balance. That's predominantly. That is. I want to explain this to your people. We will when we get there, Jimmy. I'm doing a. Because I think this is for 400. All right, so he's going working through some parts right now. We've got a whole bunch of small box stuff going on as you guys have seen, which is always fun. So now that I got all those on there, I'm not gonna torque them down yet. I'm just gonna snug them all up. On a side note, what Jeff was telling you, we have people drag a bunch of parts in this one guy drove a bunch of parts in the engine he bought had been a part for 20 plus years. Can you hold this in? down the basement yeah and, and with all that being said he brings me in harmonic balancer it's a it's a professional sfi balancer but it's got a big chunk of counterweight on one side and if i remember right i'm almost positive that 400 small block 454 big block was the only two external balance small block or engines v8 engines uh chevy ever made so with that being said, no, I can't put it on his small block Chevy. It'll vibrate it to death. So. <laughs> and that would not be good. No. And there's no balance marks on it, so I don't think it was balanced to his. I don't see how it could be balanced to his rotating assembly. Luckily, with this Eagle assembly, everything came pre-balanced, ready to rock and roll. Comes with the paperwork, tells you everything. But, you know, this is the original engine that Jimmy and I got going on behind the scenes, which we'll end up showing more of. It's the original LT1. Yep, it's got the high dome pistons, the pink rods, everything. So what we got going on here, just snugging these up, and I'm just seating it to the actual crankshaft. There we go. There we go. So next step is, is we're going to torque it. But with that, I'll be right back. All right, so now we're going to balance, or we're not going to balance. We're going to, we're going to torque this thing. But in order to torque it, you got to hold this crank from moving. So what I do is I got a breaker bar here with the right size socket for the pulley bolt on the front of the crank. That's going to keep it from rotating as I torque this. And it talks about a crisscross pattern, 85 pounds, one sequence. Jesus Christ. Did you lose the bolt? Yes, I did. Okay. Right there. Oh, man, this is tight. So there's how we do, you torque it. It's on. You notice I'm letting Jeff do the torquing. That's a young guy job, that's old guys. We just stand here and hold the extra long breaker bar to keep it from turning. I ain't stupid, I learned a lot over the years. Half of them. Just a second. He's having to torque these 85 pounds. That's why I'm just making a break on the <laughs> Go around and check them all.
Here we go. Torque down. I'm a little guy. 85 foot pounds kind of sucks. See you in a few. All right, so we achieved our goal of getting this on the run stand, but this wasn't about getting it on the run stand. It was about getting uh, the flex plate on. Um, that's a really important step when building an engine. The reason being is this is, like I said earlier, transplants all the power through the torque converter all the way to your back wheels. Um, it was just a quick little video on showing you how to put it on, how to orient it, what parts to use, how to torque it. And, you know, it's really simple, but it is, like I said, an important piece to doing that. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we also got it on the run stand. And so the next step of this is going to be, we are actually going to go in and start adding a bunch of little stuff on here to get this thing ready to fire. So with that, guys, we'll see you soon. Later.